I'm pleased to overview the Newton All Pneumatic Transport Ventilator and demonstrate its ease of use for all your critical care transports. The Newton is designed for adult and pediatric patients 50 pounds or greater. Its modes of operation are IMB, CPAP, and pressure limit. The Newton has easy to use tidal volume and rate controls with built-in CPAP and can be quickly set up and operated. Newton's clinical uses include inter and intra-hospital transport, including use in the MRI, ER, special procedures, and disaster management planning. Let's start with the features and controls of the rear panel. Here you have your gas input connection. Requires connection to a high flow oxygen source of 55 PSI. The audible alarm alerts when a patient disconnect has occurred or when oxygen source gas pressure drops below 30 PSI. This is the ambient air intake. It filters air as it enters the ventilator's entrainment system. Finally, the remote alarm output connection for use with a standard remote alarm. Let's now take a look at the front panel. We will start with the four primary controls for ventilator setup. Here is the PEEP and CPAP control adjustment. The PEEP CPAP adjusts to 20 centimeters water pressure with automatic sensitivity for changing patient needs. The demand flow rate is provided up to 140 liters per minute for the spontaneously breathing patient. The FiO2 delivered during spontaneous breathing is set by the percent oxygen control. This is the peak pressure control. Set above delivered patient pressure, this control limits peak airway pressure to a maximum of 75 centimeters water. Additionally, this control will be used to set delivered peak pressure for pressure limited breathing mode. Here you see the tidal volume control. It has a range of 360 to 1500 mLs for pediatric and adult patient needs. The Newton uses a preset flow at 36 liters per minute for all mandatory breaths. The tidal volume has been calibrated for patient delivery independent of changes in patient condition. Patient mandatory breath rate control seen here has a range of 3 to greater than 28 breaths per minute. The control has a wider range at lower respiratory rates to provide better control for slower IMV rates. Patient respiratory rate should always be monitored to ensure adequate ventilation. Here you can see the alarm controls. They include the alarm visual indicator and the alarm reset silence. The alarm reset silences the alarm for one minute. The alert condition is activated when a patient disconnect has occurred or when low source gas pressure is detected. This is the oxygen control switch. With its variable oxygen control system, the operator can choose between 100 or 65%. Both mandatory and spontaneous breaths are delivered at the set oxygen level. Seen here is the mandatory breath control. It turns on and off all mandatory breaths. In the off position, the ventilator provides CPAP only. The Newton is designed for ease of use including handles with finger grips that extend from the front panel to make the ventilator easy to transport with visual controls and a pressure manometer to assess patient ventilation with transport. Seen here, the Newton sits on a MRI compatible stand. It holds two E oxygen cylinders. The ventilator slides easily in and out and locks in place. This is the patient circuit. It's a single limb circuit with an expiratory valve that connects to the front of the ventilator. The clinician may use ET tube or face mask with angle connector. An important note though, the Newton is calibrated to the air on patient circuit. Use of any other circuit is not recommended by the FDA and may cause PEEP, CPAP, and peak pressures to be inaccurate, higher inspiratory work of breathing during spontaneous breaths, and expiratory flow resistance to be higher.
Let's now take a look at the operation of the ventilator. When we first turn on the gas, the ventilator will alarm. Press the reset silence button to silence the alarm for one minute. The alarm is set to sound after 20 seconds if no mandatory breath is delivered with a minimum of 15 centimeters of water, if the CPAP is set at less than 4 centimeters of water, or there is a loss of gas supply. Let's discuss patient setup with the tidal volume and respiratory rate controls. Set the desired patient tidal volume and respiratory rate like so. With the preset peak flow, when you change the tidal volume, your inspiratory time changes, as you can see here. Changing the respiratory rate changes expiratory time. So it is recommended that the clinician always monitor the mandatory respiratory rate. For further information on the interaction of tidal volume and respiratory rate, refer to your user manual. The peak pressure control should be set above the delivered pressure at a desired setting to assure your patient safety. With the percent oxygen control set, the ventilator is ready for any critical care ventilator situation. The Newton's other modes of operation include CPAP and pressure limit. Let's look at the operation for the CPAP system. For a spontaneously breathing patient, we can turn the mandatory breaths off and adjust the CPAP to the desired level, as seen here. As you can see, the CPAP system is very responsive with very low work of breathing. The integrated CPAP PEEP supports the IMB mode. Let's turn back on the mandatory breaths and look at spontaneous breathing between mandatory breaths with the test lung. As you can see, the CPAP remains relatively stable. You also can ventilate in the pressure limit mode. The peak pressure control can be used to pressure limit breaths for pressure ventilation. Using the combination of the CPAP PEEP control and the pressure limit control, the ventilator can be set up to deliver bi-level pressures with mandatory breaths. Let's discuss some clinical issues. In regards to pediatric usage, remember that the Newton ventilator is approved down to 23 kilogram patients. The Newton can be used as a pressure limited ventilator, measuring volumes and inspiratory time. Clinicians should monitor respiratory pattern as the ventilator's fixed flow rate of 36 liters per minute may be too high for some pediatric patients. The Newton is ideal for MRI operation with approval for up to 3.0 Tesla. The Newton has MRI compatible accessories including a stand, e-cylinders, and a regulator. A longer 8-foot patient circuit is available for patient convenience. In regards to air transport and high altitude operations, the Newton's delivered tidal volume will increase and a respiratory rate will decrease as altitude increases. For this reason, the use of an external spirometer is recommended. Pressure settings will not change as altitude changes. The Newton was originally designed for air transport and is approved for altitudes up to 15,000 feet. Do not use the ventilator in hyperbaric chambers as the delivered tidal volumes will drop rapidly as pressure increases and it is not indicated in that setting. A bacteria filter is recommended on the output of the ventilator. This will protect the patient and the ventilator from contamination. There are a number of patient safety features. First is the high pressure release, which is adjustable using the peak pressure control. It warms of excessive inspiratory flow or volume. In conjunction with this is the internal non-adjustable safety pressure release that limits circuit pressure to 80 centimeters of water, regardless of the setting of the peak pressure control. Additionally, 
There is an anti-suffocation system that in the event of ventilator malfunction, an internal valve will allow the patient to breathe ambient air. Let's discuss cleaning and maintenance. The operator should clean the Newton ventilator between patient use applications by using a mild detergent or disinfectant and water with a soft cloth. Do not immerse the ventilator in water. The Newton patient circuit is a disposable single use application and must not be cleaned, disinfected, or reused. Let me summarize the benefits of the clinical uses of the Newton ventilator. Its setup is similar to all critical care ventilators. The Newton has internal PEEP and CPAP available when you need it for controlled or spontaneous breathing. It has a choice of two oxygen levels and maximizes oxygen utilization. It has a calibrated tidal volume control for easy setup. It also has a variety of clinical use locations from the ER to the ICU to MRI. I want to thank you for your time today.